Hi guys, this is Jason here from Nathaniel and here's Shape of You by Ed Sheeran. Uh, I'm going to play it on the piano of course and uh, before we talk about the piano riff and uh, that consistent hook which goes on throughout the song, we'll first look at the chords of the the entire piece of music which is basically one chord progression, C sharp minor, then F sharp minor, a major and B major and all these chords come from the key of E major where C sharp is the 6 minor where F sharp is the 2 minor where A is the 4 major and B is the 5 major right so one might also argue that it's in the relative minor C sharp minor which is the relative minor to get the relative minor you just have to move a sixth from the major key right so that's about the chords so if you're a guitar player you can probably just play the chords in any rhythm you want because it's not really defined the song is it doesn't have a lot of the real instruments it's a lot of synths right so the underlying rhythm however in this entire song is basically a 3-3-2 three, three, so if you count 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, you're pretty much done for the entire song, right? So you have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. So one might look at this as also eighth notes without the traditional accent, which is 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and this is something we are used to a lot in classical music. But in this groove, which some may also call like a, the salsa groove, uh, you're, you're basically focusing a lot on the accents of the song. So that's one, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. So one way to count it is write down all your 8th notes. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and and you will be playing at the 1, the and of the 2 and the on of the 4. So that's 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. So if you see the pattern 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2. So you can either count it with 8th notes which is of course traditionally done in the western world or you can just count it with numbers. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, which a lot of songs are based on, right? 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, right? However, it's still a 4 beat per bar song. If you think about it, it's... One, two, three, four. You're basically still counting it as either slow four, which would be one, two, three, four. Then you're feeling this as sixteenth notes. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, little faster. Or you're feeling it as a uh, quicker four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, tang, tang. Tang, 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 tang. So I think a good exercise to start off with is just sing sing the song. And try and maintain a pulse with your hand. Tang 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 or tang 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 faster pulse. Tang 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 tang. You want to get the foundation right before you even start playing your guitar or your piano. Uh, these sort of songs can be a little deceiving because it's just one chord progression and one pattern. But it's good to just really nail it and get it 100% right rhythmically so that you can really feel the groove and then you can even improvise that further and definitely be a lot more confident when you're jamming it with other musicians like the drummer and the bass player right so that's about the groove one two three one two three one two now let's look at what's going on on the keyboard it's basically like this marimba patch which he uses and that marimba patch is there in a lot of these dance EDM songs, right? It's, uh, I can't remember the song names, but it's there in a lot of songs. Over the 332. And before I forget to mention this, I have done a separate lesson 
call the three three two pop song exercise. I don't think I've called it correctly, but we will put a link in the description for you guys to check out. So that will be a more elaborate description of this three three two. Uh, the mechanics of this three three two rhythm pattern and how popular and viral it's it's become. You know, it's used in almost every single pop and rock p uh, song, right? And it definitely creates a very groovy structure over which a lot of people can can add to. Okay, so now let's look at the piano part. So the top section I've marked out in green here. So that's the three, three, two, one, two, three. So the first three chords, you're just basically going to do right, and the fourth time you either go E D sharp B or D sharp C sharp B. That'll be the second time. So let's try and do it. Sorry. Second line, and of course you can add the bass, which will be the root notes of the chords marked here: C sharp, F sharp, A and B. You can just basically play those roots in your left or in the bass. Now in the original song, what happens is the two hands are playing basically together. But as you saw in the the introduction performance, which I did at the very beginning of this video, you can rewind and check that out if you want. I am basically playing the pulse in my left hand. And that I think is very important for the groove. If you're looking at the piano as a groove instrument, you have two hands, so why not use this for the pulse and this for the three three two? So so that's two hits of each chord: C sharp, F sharp, A, B, C sharp, F sharp, A, B. So. One two three, one two three, one two. And of course, the first time he goes, the second time, and both those happen over the B chord. <clears throat> okay, there's one more note he adds. In addition to this, for each chord, and I've written that down here. First is G sharp, and then A, and then A again, and then F sharp in the bass. You can you if you're a keyboard player, you can use your thumb for this. Let's repeat. Right. And then the ending, and try to keep the left hand going uh, as it was. Okay. Line two. And what I like to do also is just add some additional notes. Uh, just to be a little bit more percussive, so I mean you can try that if you're perhaps a little intermediate player. try to feel the groove first before you do all these uh, alterations another thing which you may want to try in the bass hand is to play at the off beat 
because the drummer is anyway is going to play at the on beat right so try to play at the off beat and and get a pattern like this one and two and so basically at every and now that tends to be a little tricky for most newcomers so try to follow it in the progression so if you are a beginner i would expect you to at least play it like this okay let me slow this down but as you grow further try to play the pulse here and then add the off beat add these uh, colors in the right hand tan ta ke ta ta tan ta ke ta ta tan tak it right so those are just variations which i have come up with um, of course it it can get a bit boring right if you're playing this live with a band for about what 4 minutes but in the track i'm sure is just a synth which is probably programmed so yeah well, it's good for the recording but uh, i'd always encourage you to try and go beyond the recording try to watch a few live performances of the song as well uh, you learn a lot i'm sure there could be different versions also on youtube which you could learn from there could be a piano version there could be like a hard rock version i guess so uh, try to find out different versions on the internet as well but however this is the core so in conclusion it's a 3 3 2 feel or a rhythm pattern 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 the chords are c sharp minor f sharp minor a major b major and i've showed you that piano pattern right from the beginning of this lesson right so hope you found that lesson useful uh, if you did do check out our other videos on the same uh, playlist and uh, also share the video around with your musician friends cheers don't forget to like subscribe hit that bell icon for notifications leave us a comment for any other video you'd like us to do next and don't forget to share the video with all your musician friends cheers